Republican Democrat Melanie Stansberry is headed to Washington to represent the Albuquerque area in Congress. As you can see, Stansberry's victory was a landslide over Republican Mark Boers, who is trailing by 24 points. It only took about an hour after the polls closed to call the selection. And that meant the party started early at the Hotel Albuquerque, where the Democrats were camped out tonight. That's where News 13's Annalisa Pardo joins us live. Annalisa? Jess and Dean, you can see supporters are still out here celebrating. Now we talked to the newly elected congresswoman tonight. She hopes her victory is a sign for the election next year. It's just such an important victory to our state, to our communities, and to our country. I'm just so proud. Stansbury is the first Democrat elected to Congress in a special election in New Mexico. Democratic leaders who spoke tonight say this win reflects how President Biden and Democrats on the national level are doing. Stansbury shared her priorities for her new role. The number one priority is the economy and getting New Mexicans back to work. You know, I think everyone is struggling right now in terms of coming out of the pandemic. But we also need to be addressing some of the systemic issues in our community, like hunger and homelessness and, you know, investing in education and infrastructure and addressing environmental issues. So all of those things are important, but right now the economy is front and center. Stansbury is a two-term state rep whose district covers parts of the Heights. Before her time in the Roundhouse, Stansbury worked in community development and has a background in natural resources and science issues like water security. Now she says tonight she will celebrate and start work for her new role tomorrow. She also says she'll likely be heading to Washington in a couple of weeks. Back to you. All right, Annalisa, thank you. Democrats have now won eight elections in a row in Congressional District 1 with the average margin of victory at about 18 points. Turnout for today's election was low, hitting about 29 percent. Our political analyst Gabe Sanchez joined us earlier tonight from out of state to break down tonight's race. Gabe, really no surprises here tonight in an area where 60 percent of the vote went to Biden back in November. What's it going to take for Republicans to win this area? Absolutely no surprises. Melanie Stansbury, our new congresswoman from the Albuquerque district in New Mexico. I think the only thing that's really going to change the outcome here for Republicans is redistricting. Obviously, we're coming up on a redistricting cycle, and one of the things we look for is competitiveness. That's one of the criterion for redistricting. So there's a possibility you could move some Democrats out of this district, maybe down south. Uh, the challenge is for Republicans, if you do that, they, that makes this more competitive for Republicans, but that might decrease the likelihood that they have a safe competitive advantage down south. But I really see that as really being the only likelihood of making this a more competitive district for Republicans at this point. And Gabe, while it was an easy win for Democrats tonight, House Democrats didn't want to take any chances tonight. They poured in $100,000 compared to House Republicans, who only gave Mark Moore 7000 How worried are Democrats about keeping their majority, and what does this race say for midterm races? Well, I think the money that came in for Stansbury indicates Democrats didn't want to leave anything to chance, keep their advantage, not give up any seats, and really not make this even competitive. Um, I think what it tells us about the big picture is Democrats are going to be all in when it comes to the, the next round of, of election cycles. But I don't think this district tells us a whole lot about the national picture. As noted, this range is about 18 percent average the last few cycles for Democrats. So it doesn't really give us a crystal ball outlook of what things might look like in 2022. But I think it gives us some indication that Democrats are going to pour money into these districts even when they're not competitive. Gabe, always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us tonight. All right. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it.